All right, let's kick things off with Thomas. Hey, Thomas. Hello, hello. How are we? Good, good. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, I've been doing 3D for over 14 years at this point. Uh, started out in high-end visualization, has since worked in you know, advertising, AR, VR, animation, visual effects. And uh, of course, in the recent years, I've picked up Houdini and uh, it's, been, it's been quite a nice change. Nice. So what are you going to be talking about today? Uh, so my presentation today is from the Madini Day 14 challenge called Ancients, where I did um, a crowd system full of mummies. Uh, so I'll be going through how to set up bandages, how to um, include the uh, bandages as part of the vellum simulation for the, uh, for the characters, and then eventually set up a, a crowd system. Um, and then lastly, I'll show how to make it all look nice with the Houdini OpenGL viewport. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Let's jump in. All right, thank you for joining my Martini presentation for the day 14 topic, Ancient. My entry was a crowd setup of mummies, um, which looked like this. This is a crowd setup with um, avoidance and obstacle detection, as well as a simple vellum simulation for the strands on the arms and body. So my presentation will be a brief overview over how I set up this scene and uh, we'll touch briefly on how I generated the bandages for the mummies, um, how I then took that geometry information and added it back into the BIPID3 um, agents, which is the foundation for this setup. Uh, then we look at um, how I prepared the uh, bandage strands that, that are moving. Um, we have a quick look at the crowd setup itself, and then we look at how I extract the uh, vellum data to then run a vellum simulation on the strands post crowd sim. And at the end, we'll have a quick look at how I got a, got this look uh, using Houdini's OpenGL viewport. All right, let's jump in. So this is the scene. Um, all in all, it's a uh, it's quite simple, fairly basic, nothing, nothing you haven't seen before. Bunch of lights, some scene geometry, and of course the crowd setup. So a quick overview over how this works. At the top, I'm importing the BIPID3 uh, character that comes with Dini. Um, it comes with motion capture data that uh, happens to have a zombie preset, which is what I'm using here. I'm then taking that um, character and I am using that as the basis for generating my bandages. The result of that then gets fed, fed back in and here I'm doing, uh, I'm basically regenerating the um, uh, the capture weights uh, so that the bandages and the agent becomes one again. Uh, that then feeds into the actual agent setup uh, for the crowd system and at some point I branch out and I generate the vellum um, bandages that are that are moving, and the um, the rest of this is just the uh, agent setup and uh, all the things that it needs, including the um, walking clips that gets imported. The result of that gets imported uh, in from the .NET, and then here I branch off and isolate the vellum part of that crowd simulation. Um, so that I can run a vellum simulation on just those parts and then they get combined back together. So a closer look at what that looks like uh, is at the top. We import our lovely agent. And uh, I take that T-pose and I convert him into, um, <laughs> into basically a volume, into a closed shape because the the basic idea behind the bandages uh, obviously has to be it has to be considered that this is uh, day 14 out of a 31 day challenge where time is limited so the the goal was to find a solution that would generate uh, decent looking bandages but also n not take several days to actually execute so the idea I came up with was basically to take a bunch of geometry and run an inter intersect check uh, that should give me some lines that I hopefully could turn into bandages. So for that to work, I needed the um, the agent to be a solid because otherwise, uh, when I scatter a bunch of planes in this 
case and I run an intersect check, I get something that looks like this. Uh, but if my starting mesh is not solid, you would also get lines on the inside, which I obviously don't want. So I do a bunch of cleanup and then I use the vellum post process node basically as a sweep. It has a, some relax uh, options and a few other things that are handy, but effectively it's a sweep in this case. Um, and then take the result of that and I ray it back onto the original mesh, which is a little bit hard to see here, but if we just jump down and I set the blend to one, this is the result of the ray. Well, you can see it follows the character quite nicely, but it is also flat because it doesn't know, like each strand doesn't know where the other strand is. It's just intersecting. So it's a little too flat. Um, but without raying, um, we end up with something like this where they all rotate a little bit strange. So I figured that if I took the result and I did a blend between them somewhere along the halfway point, uh, it would look okay. It would give me shadow detail, which I'm after, but also sort of stick to the character. Then I'm doing more cleanup, copying some attributes and some UVs, uh, setting up a group so that I can control the material later. And I'm basically taking that output and feeding it back into the imported agent. Um, so that looks like this. Um, and here I'm doing, uh, I guess, what has more or less become a common KineFX workflow where I am taking the original skeleton and I'm basically recalculating um, the geometry capture data, but this time including the bandages so that when the character moves, the bandages will also follow. Um, here I start setting up the agent, which when it comes from KineFX has to be done uh, in a few more steps than if you're doing straight crowds. But um, yeah, so you start by creating an agent from the skeleton, then we add the mesh as a layer. And in this case, I have a naked layer, uh, which is just the original agent. And then I have a second layer, um, which I'm calling bandages, that is the new mesh combination. <clears throat> then I load in uh, a bunch of animation clips, including a T-pose and four walks. And I'm taking that T-pose and extracting just the, um, just the naked agent again, because for the vellum setup, I don't want to use the, um, the bandages as collision objects because it's just too much data, basically. There's no need for that. But here I'm setting up a classic vellum setup as you would with anything else. I'm, I create a few strands, I set up some constraints, and I'm using the character itself as collision. Uh, and then I repack those vellum strands uh, so that the agent setup uh, understands it. That then gets loaded in as part of a, an agent layer. And we call it vellum. Um, so what that does is that when we run the simulation, all the different informations in the crowd setup all gets calculated, whether it's displayed or not. But what this allows us to do is to, um, when we create our crowd setup, not only do we end up with, um, with vellum um, pieces on all the agents, the starting points and the constraint uh, pins for the vellum simulation also follows the agents um, because they're part of the simulation. But you'll see here that I'm actually doing the simulation without displaying the vellum uh, parts. So this is the agent setup. And if we briefly jump into the actual crowd setup, um, it's a fairly standard crowd setup where I you have constraints uh, and we have our clips, our T-pose and our walk. And in our walk, I'm basically loading the four different walks and just randomizing so that they all have a slightly different walk. Um, I'm then 
doing a clip transition from t pose to a random walk and the reason for that is because of the vellum setup so think of this as pre-roll we're setting up vellum in a t pose uh, so that it you know it's easier to control and to connect the constraints but obviously we don't want to simulate our agents in a t pose so what i'm doing is that i'm transitioning from a t pose to the walks and you'll notice that some of the legs are like stretching out and that's because the uh, walks actually have uh, foot locking and the way that it works is that both the t-pose and the walk clip is actually playing at the same time and the blend is just a, a linear blend between the two so underneath even when they're standing mostly in t-pose the feet are technically moving so the stretching of the um of the feet is just the foot locking playing catch up basically um, so that means that I have about 65 frames of pre-roll, um, but it's enough time for the vellum strands to get into place and start colliding correctly. Let's see a little bit later. So the result of the um, crowd simulation gets loaded back in from the dotnet, and then I am blasting a couple of agents that are running into walls or just not looking the way that I want them to. We don't really see them, but there's no reason to keep them if we don't use them. I'm then taking the animation output and switching the layer back to the vellum layer. Like I mentioned before, uh, everything in crowds gets calculated at all times, whether it's displayed or not. So here I can actually just swap between the naked um, the bandages and the vellum strands, which is what I want. And now, as you can see, they're simulated. And this is where the pre-wall comes in, where that nice soft pre-wall into the walk is what we'll be using for the actual vellum simulation. So I'm extracting the vellum data so that we get a vellum strand on each agent and we're getting their starting points. And then it's just a good old vellum cloth simulation with the agents themselves as collision and what we end up with is a bunch of nicely moving and colliding bandages um, that we then end up combining with the um, agents to have both together and this is taking a little minute so there we go so if we just turn off the unpack see how now everything is moving and following nicely. And that is the basics of the core setup. So the last thing is how I got the look that I did without actually rendering um, other than just using the viewport. And the main secret to that is the uh, high quality lighting settings. If you hold down right click on that, you can turn on a bunch of um, settings, uh, including depth of field and volume fog and reflections and so on. And it actually does a pretty good job. Um, so if I turn my textures on, it looks like this. <clears throat> and if I jump to the high res, we're getting volumetric data uh, for all our lights. <clears throat> and um, you'll notice that we don't have any shadows. It just looks a bit funny. And there's something about the way that the lights hit these that are not quite right. And the reason for that, should you, uh, should you run into this, is because they're still packed. So the viewport sees them as points and not actually as uh, primitives that it can you know, do shading operations uh, to. So if we unpack them, take a second. you will see instantly that we get correct shadows and um, shading information, basically. It's pretty cool. So another tip to how to get this to work properly, other than setting up the viewport settings, is that um, for things like ambient occlusion and uh, reflection to work properly, the viewport is expecting um, basically a principal or a PBR sh uh, shader. So in my case, uh, in my scene, I'm using the Labs Quick Material, which is basically a wrapped principal shader that just makes it easy to load in textures. Uh, and the same for the agents, they're also using the same. 
but that's it. So just to quickly recap, um, we've looked at how to generate the bandages for the mummies. We looked at how, com how to combine those bandages with the existing biped model uh, so that they all follow, follow the animation together. Then we looked at how to set up the uh, strands for the initial uh, vellum setup for the constraints, and then how to do the crowd simulation. Then we um, extracted the vellum data to do a, a vellum class simulation. And uh, lastly, how to achieve this look using the OpenGL viewport. Thank you for watching.